I am here with Ishmael Reed. He is the author of Mumbo Jumbo, Flight to Canada, and now he has got a new play. I'm nervous about your new play, mm -hmm. I gotta say. A lot of people are. As a kind of white woman from the South, I really love Hamilton. It makes me feel kind of warm and fuzzy about slavery. Oh, could you tell us just about your play? The play is entitled The Haunting of Lynn Manuel Miranda. He wrote Hamilton. He's more comfortable with show tunes than with history. I love those show tunes. I sing along, and I really like how it excuses me from any kind of white guilt. There was more diversity on the stage than in the audience. As a white woman, you might want to know, people who did the most uh, scalding piece about this musical were women. I did not expect you to say that. There was Michelle de Ross at uh, Albany State. There's Lynn Montanero, whom, whom I cite in the play. And there's Nancy Eisenberg. Now, I like solidarity with women, but can't we just enjoy art? Like, I like going to Broadway, I like to see a show, and I don't want to have to think about it. There's a hidden history behind Hamilton. For example, when Hamilton arrives in New York, but in the uh, musical, Hamilton the Revolution, there's all this stuff about New York made him a new man. New York being the greatest city in the world. It wasn't a great city for slaves and Native Americans. Wait, it wasn't? Well, Native Americans were massacred there. They were massacred? Yeah, and and, ha and Hamilton endorsed the massacre. Saw them as beasts just like Washington. Wait, how could this be, Ishmael? Because I feel like I have been sold a Broadway musical that's making me feel good inside. And actually, you're telling me well, that you know, it might should make me feel like shit. It's like the Star Spangled Banner. This is state art art that's endorsed by the state. Both uh, Barack Obama and Dick Cheney endorsed Hamilton. It is like uh, Toscanini. Mm -hmm. Toscanini was criticized when he went to fascist Italy because he didn't play their little state song. I mean, it's an awful uh, thing that they okay. wrote. But he said, I'm not going to play this. You know, this. I play art. I don't play junk like that. As, as a person coming from my background, we have always challenged the official line. The official historian, Mike Chernow, Mm -hmm. It was a character in my play. They get paid to treat these guys like uh, gods. Oh, he's making bank. In my play, I note that he wrote a biography of J.P. Morgan. Oh, now he's wow. Living like, now he's living like J.P. Morgan. Uh, there had been rumblings. There were rumblings. Among historians. Mm -hmm. And my reading brought it all to light. I mean, these guys have dominated yeah. the history profession. Mm -hmm. The women, uh, Latinx and blacks, are now causing upheaval in the American historical establishment. I said at their convention, they should issue an apology for all of the bigotry that they promoted by, you know, standing by people like Robert E. Lee and George Washington and, uh, and Hamilton, who, if they were around today, they'd be the hate for war crimes. That's some strong words. If Ron Chernow, or now or never, and Lynn manuel Miranda called you up mm -hmm. and said, Ishmael, you hurt our feelings. They sent an ambassador. Now they check it us out. New York Times confronted Ron Chernow at a cocktail party. Mm -hmm. And he ran. And on The View. I like that show. They sided with me and said, yeah, we should get the real mm -hmm. dope about America. Some people who are watching this might be writers just starting out. And they're thinking, well, sure, Ishmael Reed can take on Hamilton, but I can't. I was surprised to see something in the Boston Review. He mentioned me as among those people who are no longer darlings of the liberal establishment, but who walked away from it. And he mentioned Gwendolyn Brooks, who went black on them. They gave her the fullest surprise. What does it mean to go black on them? Well, it means that she got into black nationalism and black okay. politics when the establishment had accepted her and gave her a bullet surprise. Uh, okay. So, I mean, when the establishment gives you a bullet surprise, you can coast through the rest of your life on that. She gave all that up and started publishing with a black publisher. Mm -hmm. And then Amiri was the next token after they got rid of ball. George Scallop, the great uh, science fiction writer. Mm -hmm. I interviewed him when he was 80 years old. Black people criticized us for interviewing him because he's voting for Nixon. And I said, okay, well, Nixon gave more money to the arts than anybody else. Anyway, you don't he, have to sell me on Nixon. Well, I mean, yeah. I love Nixon. Well, I told Daniel Ellsberg that I missed him. Yeah. I mean, I told Ellsberg that you know, compared to what we got now. You have to make a decision. Do I want to be at the wine and cheese party right. or do I want to write the be truth? Able, be able to look at yourself in the mirror the next day. Ooh. They keep feeding me like I'm some kind of journeyman boxer who was a champion one time. And they put me up against all these little rookies and their tokens. Mm -hmm. So these tokens have to hit me. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't even live in New York. I'm just 
someone who takes on you know, institutions against the odds. So they sent Annette Gordon Reed, someone whom I have a great deal of respect for. She came the first night. She asked me the question. She says, Well, you haven't seen the play. I said, Well, I haven't seen King Lear either. So it turns out she's on the payroll. No way. Yeah, she's on the payroll. Wait, the payroll at Hamilton? That's millions of dollars. They right? sent her. I mean, they sent her or not. But she, she was, was there. sitting in the front row. We know you're on the payroll. Yeah. But she said she enjoyed the show. So apparently they hired her, and she's going to be a consultant on the Hamilton Museum. Here's the creation myth getting even bigger. With, it's with going a, to have a museum. With, yeah, with a bigger payroll. The play itself is yeah, going to have a museum. A museum, right. They're building a museum oh. to Hamilton, who married into a slaveholding family. We want to go see your play. Where can we see on it? May 23rd. May 23rd. It's going to open up at the New York Rican Forest Cafe. Mm -hmm. This is a rabble play, like Hamilton considered the master being rabble. Mm -hmm. So you got a rabble playwright. you got a rabble cast. You got rabble tickets. Carl and I had to spend the mortgage money to buy a ticket to get him to Hamilton, San Francisco. It was so expensive. And when we had I about went. two or three black people in the audience. We had rabble prices, fifteen dollars, at a rabble theater. We don't have no intermission where you can go get brandy and mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like go to the little cookies, the Italian cookies. What do you call those things? No. Biscotti. Biscotti. You, don't, you can't Something buy no like biscotti. Mm -hmm. Just banana pudding. 